Christopher Nolan. This guy is probably one of the best and most popular filmmakers today. He's one of those guys whose movies consistently make the critics and general audiences happy. I mean, his movies have 34 Oscar nominations between them and earned almost $5 billion worldwide. His latest movie, Tenet, came out not too long ago at the time of recording and has generated so much hype and discussion. Since Nolan has only 11 feature-length movies which he directed, I thought we'd do something fun today and rank them from worst to best. Now, full disclosure, I like all Christopher Nolan movies, so it's pretty hard to rank them. But let's try. As with my other ranking videos, I rank based on three key metrics. Number one, filmmaking quality, or how technically amazing the film is, how well it looks, sounds, and is edited. I also rank based on emotional impact, aka the extent to which the film made me cry, ponder life, or just stare at the screen in complete awe. Finally, I consider rewatchability. If I had to pick, which movie would I watch again and again? Alright, now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's time to rank some movies. You ready? Might well try and keep up. Let's start at number 11, and I've chosen Insomnia. This was Nolan's third film, and the only one that he didn't write the script for. This is a psychological thriller, and it follows two detectives who are sent to investigate a murder in a quiet Alaskan town. Now, I like Insomnia, I really do, and I agree with a lot of critics that it's underrated. But it's still not enough to drag itself out from the bottom of the list. The film has some incredible performances by Al Pacino and the late great Robin Williams, and I love the backstory of Al Pacino's Will Dorman character, who is himself being investigated by internal affairs for some questionable stuff in his past. I also like how the story uses the location to its advantage because in this Alaskan town, in this season, it's daylight 24-7 and that makes it hard for Al Pacino's character to sleep. And you can see that psychological decline portrayed and directed very well by Nolan. I guess the film is at the bottom of my list because it's the least ambitious Nolan movie. It doesn't have a crazy concept, it doesn't play with non-linear storytelling, which Nolan is really good at. It's just a solid, engaging crime thriller that Nolan did his best with, and because he didn't write the movie, I think that he could only do so much. Number 10 on this list is following. Christopher Nolan's first movie was a really good film as far as first attempts go, but because it's his first attempt, it was clearly a little rough around the edges. Following is about a man whose main hobby is to follow strangers around the city, and one day he follows someone who leads him down a dark and unexpected path. Christopher Nolan shot this movie with a crazy budget of just $6,000, which Nolan paid for with his own salary. Not only that, a lot of his cast had full-time jobs, so he could only shoot on weekends. So if efficient use of time and money was part of the ranking criteria, following would be at the top of this list. We can already tell in following that Christopher Nolan had the makings of a really good director. Everything from the camera work to the pacing to the story itself seemed very competent. A lot of the actors were not the most experienced, but with Nolan's direction, they managed to pull off a believable performance overall. This was also the first time we see Christopher Nolan playing around with time in his movies, specifically with non-linear storytelling, a technique he would go on to use in several of his best movies. But in following, I thought it was sometimes difficult to tell when this storytelling device was being used, so sometimes the editing got a bit messy, and when we have that combined with an overall unpolished feel to the movie, I think it's reasonable to put it at number 10 on this list. Number 9 for me is Interstellar, a sci-fi adventure film which was incidentally my first IMAX experience, and what an experience it was. Nolan's first space movie was as beautiful as it was complex. Matthew McConaughey plays an astronaut who goes on a voyage with the hope of saving a slowly dying Earth. I'll never forget sitting in a theater in absolute wonder. The visual effects deserved its Oscar win, and the sound design and score was simply magnificent. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I do think this was Hans Zimmer's last great score. I hope that comment 
doesn't age well. Interstellar also has what I think is the most heart-wrenching scene of any Christopher Nolan movie, which involves a character watching a video recording. If you've seen the movie, you know which one I'm talking about. The reason I've ranked Interstellar at number 9 is simply because the middle and final act kind of falters a little bit. For a production that emphasizes its scientific realism in its treatment of time and visuals, I felt that it turned its back on its principles a little bit with its conversation about love, as well as the very convenient fate of Matthew McConaughey's character in the end. Overall, still a great movie watching experience. My number 8 might be a controversial choice, and it's Batman Begins. However famous Christopher Nolan is, he's probably best known for his three Batman movies, and it all started with Batman Begins in 2005. At the time, Batman movies had spiraled downwards, with Batman and Robin getting panned by critics in 1997. Up stepped Nolan with a film grounded in realism and a dark and gritty take on Bruce Wayne. Even with the plethora of superhero movies that followed in the next 15 years, Batman Begins is still up there as one of the best superhero origin movies, with a solid performance by Christian Bale, a simple story full of momentum, and a powerful theme of fear and revenge, manifesting itself in the form of the movie's villains. Hollywood was already well acquainted with Christopher for Nolan before, but with Batman Begins, Nolan introduced himself to the world. I wish it could be higher on this list, and I can already hear the comments asking why this is the lowest ranked Batman movie, but I'll explain that when the time comes. And that time is now, because at number 7 is The Dark Knight Rises, the final Batman movie from Nolan. In this film, Tom Hardy's Bane arrives to threaten the safety of Gotham once again, and a visibly jaded Bruce Wayne has to put on the Batsuit again. For me, The Dark Knight Rises has some of Nolan's most profound character work around belief and determination. It's also got some of his most epic set pieces. I mean, who can forget the plane hijacking scene or the collapsing stadium from the trailer? While critics may argue that The Dark Knight Rises became a missed opportunity for slipping into conventionality, pretentious spectacle, as well as some very dodgy advice for healing a broken back, I for one thought The Dark Knight Rises was spectacular, and everything a blockbuster film with a touch of philosophy needs to be. This is not to say that I don't agree with some of the criticism, but the reason I'm able to look past it is to do with the time in which I saw the film, and the reason I've ranked this higher than Batman Begins. The Dark Knight Rises was one of the first movies I saw when I started going to movie theaters regularly, when I was a teenager and had a more mature understanding understanding of the meaning behind films, so it's no surprise that I was awestruck at this cinematic joyride and saw the film multiple times in cinemas. The Dark Knight Rises will always be a formative movie watching experience for me, and that's enough for me to put it at number 7. At number 6 for me is Tenet. I'm a little unsure about whether this ranking will change in 5 years, but having seen it twice, I'm comfortable putting Tenet here for now. Tenet is a sci-fi spy film centered around John David Washington's protagonist, who is recruited for a secret mission to investigate mysterious events that might cause the end of the world. You know, standard spy stuff. What is not standard is the way Christopher Nolan tells this story, incorporating the complex concept of, say it with me, entropic inversion, and utilizing that concept to its limit. To me, this makes Tenet the most ambitious project ever managed by Nolan, not just because its concept is the hardest to wrap our heads around, but also because of the commercial plans surrounding this movie, and the studio's decision to market and release the film while the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing. The film loses points because of how inaccessible it is to the average moviegoer, so much so that the marketing has constantly told us that we shouldn't try to understand it, but try to feel it. Don't try to understand it. Feel it. 
but having seen it the second time, I can say that it is a significantly more cohesive, exciting, and satisfying narrative that has some incredible action, great cinematography, and a pretty kick-ass score too. It's actually pretty amazing and probably has one of the highest rewatchability scores of any film on this list. If you haven't seen my previous video focusing on Tenet, then I'd encourage you to do so. We're entering top 5 territory here, and at number 5 is The Prestige, a film that I would probably describe as a historical thriller, featuring a stacked cast including Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, Scarlett Johansson, and David Bowie. The Prestige is about two rival magicians who try to outwit each other, with devastating consequences. This might sound like a spoiler to some of you, but this film has one of the most haunting twist endings I've seen in a movie period. And that makes a lot of sense because the movie is about magic and illusions. It's amazing how Nolan crafted a film which has misdirection at its core. Every scene in this film is significant to the bigger puzzle the viewer is asked to solve. And Nolan outdoes himself by creating a puzzle that shocks and surprises. The Prestige is a film that I admire more than I enjoy, but I believe it's a masterclass in filmmaking. And Nolan brings a sinister, but delightful energy to the process of making movie magic. At number 4 is Dunkirk, another phenomenal film that I think is the most unique movie that Nolan has ever made. Dunkirk is a war film which covers the real-life evacuation of British soldiers from Dunkirk during World War II. What is amazing about Dunkirk is how Nolan immerses the viewer into many facets of war which we don't often see in other films chillingly beautiful wide shots to show the scale of a hopeless battlefield, no names mentioned to symbolize the facelessness of war, and a creative use of non-linear storytelling to represent the disorientation that comes with intense battle. Because it's based on real life events, this is probably the only Nolan movie where everyone can look up the ending. And yet, Nolan treats the film with so much attention to detail that we just have to marvel at how well the story was adapted to the screen. Dunkirk is a war movie in one of the truest forms of the phrase and has the polish and poise of a director who knows exactly what he's doing. Now my top 3 Nolan movies were difficult to place, but I ranked them here because of how revolutionary they've been to how we perceive movies today. At number 3 is The Dark Knight. Along with Iron Man, The Dark Knight is a 2008 movie that shifted the landscape of cinema in the 2010s. Never before has a superhero film dived so deeply into the human psyche, showing us not just the classic battle between Batman and the Joker, but the underlying philosophies that govern each of the film's characters. The ideological struggle for power over a city, the internal battle of good versus evil, and the greater question of what humanity means means to us. Those are issues that no one imagined could be explored so deeply in a superhero movie until Christopher Nolan gave us this film. Supported by a legendary performance from the late Heath Ledger, and even more amazing action set pieces including the famous Joker truck flip, The Dark Knight is rightly considered not just one of the best superhero movies of all time, but also one of the best movies of all time. It's arguably the film that Christopher Nolan is best known for, and you could be forgiven for for questioning how such a good film can only be at number 3. Inception is absolutely fantastic on so many levels. It's got an incredible cast with the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio, Marion Cotillard, Tom Hardy, Ellen Page, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Its concept is simply brilliant, being a sci-fi heist movie about thieves infiltrating the dreams of their targets. The main mission sets up incredibly well-thought obstacles, which make for some of the best action scenes I've ever seen. This is accentuated by creative practical effects and a simple but powerful score from Hans Zimmer. The plot seems complex at first, but is really a linear storyline that I appreciated more and more as the film went on. The film also holds up on repeat viewings and doesn't seem dated even after more than a decade. Inception is a film about 
many things. You could say it's a movie about filmmaking because the team comes together like a movie crew does with a director, a producer, a visual effects artist, an actor, and a studio exec. You could say it's a movie about letting go of the past as our protagonist struggles with his past. But most of all, Inception asks questions about reality. What is real and is it something our characters can decide on their own? This question is thrown at us throughout the film, but most significantly during the film's ambiguous ending, which to this day is one of the most cathartic, mind-blowing endings I've seen to a film. Inception is absolutely riveting from start to finish. Its high stakes make it such a layered film, literally, and I think Christopher Nolan deserved an Oscar for this. Inception has the best balance of filmmaking technique, rewatchability, and emotional impact and that's why it deserves its top placing on this list. Now, where was I? Oh yes, at number two is the movie that really put Nolan on the map in Hollywood, a film that is known not really for its story, but how the story is told. I'm talking, of course, about Memento, the story of a man with interrogate amnesia trying to find and kill the man who murdered his wife. Guy Pearce is a great lead, but this movie makes it to number two through the perfection of its amazingly edited story, where scenes moving forward are intercut between scenes that are told going backwards in time. Memento is definitely not the first movie to play with time like this, but I think it does it best. Unlike Tenet, the concept here is not too difficult to wrap your head around the first time, while also allowing the viewer to follow the mystery as it slowly unraveled. This is nothing short of a filmmaking masterpiece from Nolan, and despite it being one of his earliest films, Memento still holds up today as one of the best. The editing alone is reason to watch the film over and over, but realizing where the movie ends and what actually happened to our main character is like a satisfying slap in the face as we realize that the end of the film may not really be the end at all. This film is not just essential Nolan, but is essential watching for any movie fan. And that's why I put it at number two. And so we've arrived at number one, my favorite Christopher Nolan movie and one of my favorite films of all time. That movie is Inception. Inception is absolutely fantastic on so many levels. Wait a second. So there you have it, the best and worst Christopher Nolan movies in my humble opinion. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you like it, do share it. And of course, I'm very curious to know what you think. How would you order this list? Let me know in the comments below. What are your favorite Christopher Nolan movies? Give me your top five or your top three or even the full 11 if you want. I'm very excited to start a discussion with you. As always, I'll be back with another video soon. So until next time, have a great week ahead, maximum hype, and I'll see you soon.